Now, Atla is a, as I have stated, and you don't have to believe me, uh, you just don't have to believe me, but I've stated that God said to me that Atla is a word and sound that had never been heard on planet Earth until he spoke it to me. Not by men, nor planet Earth, or in heaven, by angels until he spoke. This is a one-on-one -on -one between me and God, Atla. Now, to be sure, the word A-T has been used, such as Atlanta or Atlantis. Uh, but the sound uh, had never been of Atla, that complete formation of sound, Atla. Atlantic may have been Atlas or Atlantis or Atlanta may have been seen and the alphabets put together in some configuration. But that one particular sound of all the sounds ever heard in heaven I don't know, Atla, is a sound that's just unique. And I've been preaching this as a vision for 30 years. And I'll have a lot more to say about that. But I, I want to be able to express that the, uh, the, the sound Atla, as we have now come to understand by way of revelation, that Atla is now hidden, is the hidden manna. That when Jesus prophesied uh, to John the Revelator in Revelation chapter 2, verse 17, that he that overcometh, I will give to him to eat of the hidden manna. And I will also give a white stone and write upon it a name that no man knoweth except him that receiveth it. That's Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. And um, we're going to demonstrate that a little bit more emphatically if you're not familiar with that verse in the book of Revelation. But strangely enough, God uses the word Allah. Listen. I mean, hidden, hidden manna, rather. God uses the term hidden manna when he talks about a, a, a new name. And I believe what Almighty God, what the Lord God Almighty has done for us is that he has given to us hidden manna. Now, manna is or was a form of, of creation that, was from outer space. Let's say it that way. I don't particularly like using that genre of idea. But manna was a creation that its, its, its physics and its elements could not, and at present cannot be found on the element chart. That is to say that when God created the heaven and the earth in the six-day creation, Everything that was created in a physical form, its genesis can be found in the atomic nuclear element chart that is composite, uh, was created in the six-day creation. Manna, on the other hand, you cannot find the physics of manna in the in the element chart, 138 elements, 132, whatever it is, you won't hold me strictly to those number of elements on the element chart. But manna is, is physics, is physical composition, cannot be found on the element chart. In other words, it is a post-creation introduction directly from heaven to a specific group of people, namely the Jews in the wilderness there with Moses for 40 years. Manna, that's what it is. And I'm going to read a verse from uh, the book of Numbers in just a moment that would indicate that manna, uh, once of action from Joshua, that manna, that there has never been any other manna in the planet, it stopped, Joshua says, when they crossed the Jordan. There's never been any other kind of manner or anything like manner till Almighty God spoke the word Atla to me. Now, that may be very difficult for you to believe. And I, you know, sometimes I just tell people that, you know, uh, well, here's where Jesus says it. 
Jesus and you are familiar with these, uh, these intro to uh, the seven churches of Asia Minor in the book of Revelation. Jesus says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. And that excludes anybody who chooses not to hear or chooses not to believe. We're not going to worry about you. Jesus said, if you can't hear, you're not hearing what I'm saying, you, you don't believe it, we're not going to worry about you. We're only going to concern ourselves with those that have an ear to hear. He that hath an ear, let him hear. Now, but you don't have to believe me. But I'm asking you to listen anyway. Maybe you'll become a believer. I don't know. But manna was a composite honey biscuit that fed the children of Israel for 40 years out in the wilderness. But it, it is post-creation. It came directly from heaven. The sources of all food, the source of all foods, the source of all foods comes from planet Earth, all foods. Whether you eat sunflowers or whether you eat lamb chops, whether we eat blueberries, or whether we eat pecans, the source of all foods, whether you like vanilla or chocolate, the source of all foods, whether you drink milk or whether you like hamburgers, the source of all foods, whether you like the sesame seed or plain white sliced bread, the source of all foods come from planet Earth. Manna does not have its source in the origination on planet Earth. That's, that's interesting, I believe. And if you can stop for just a moment uh, and stop being so religious and, and listen, you know, you're, struck, you're stuck in your Baptist, your Catholic, your Jewish, your Muslim, your Hindu. By the way, you know, what is it with Muslims anyway? They're not going anywhere. They're not doing anything. The, the religion is dry as dry bones in the valley of dry bones in the Ezekiel. Well, what is it all about? But anyway, manna does not have this origination in the food, all food sources. Manna comes directly from heaven, and that's what God fed the children of Israel with, something that does not have its origination in planet Earth. And for 40 years, that's what they ate out there in the wilderness. So I'm saying, Atla, when God gave me the sound, Atla, the complete sound, that nobody had ever heard that before. Its origination was not on Earth. Not the sound of a tree falling in the wilderness or the sound of the waves rushing to shore, or the sound of a rooster when he crows in the morning, or the sound of a red bird when they tweet in the trees, or the sound of crickets late at night, or the sound of a wolf howling from the hills, or the sound of a horse baying as he runs, or the sound of children at laughter, at play and laughter. The sound of law had never been heard on planet Earth until God spoke it to me. Is that, that's how unique it is. Obviously, obviously I have a purpose for saying this to you because I believe, a large number of you believe me, but and you don't call me a liar, but you're not ready to step out and embrace Atla as, 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 with that totality. It, that's major. That's major. But I pray that you will, because if you do, it's going to be an extraordinary life change to know that you're now functioning in, in a post-six-day creation event. Atla, hidden manna. By the way, let me read from Joshua um, uh, chapter, where is it, Joshua chapter 5, about manna. We, we have been reading over the past few days now um, about uh, manna and, and, and Deuteronomy chapter 8, uh, verse 3. We've been reading about that, and that has, um, 
and we, we're pretty much into understanding that process, uh, that manna came and that nobody had never seen it before. But let me read Joshua. Let me, I'm in the book of Joshua now, and Joshua chapter 14, going back with the Joshua, not Joshua chapter 8, uh, Joshua chapter 7. All right, where am I? Let's see what I can find here so I can find it. All right, so Joshua, um, what, what, what do we got here now? All right, um, Joshua chapter 5, verse 12, right? Um, and it says, and the manna ceased. Now, I've, I've told you that for 40 years, they ate manna in the wilderness, for 40 years. I've explained to you that manna, the, cons the constitution, the consistency, the physics of manna cannot be found on the element chart. It was not a part of the sixth Greek cre creation. Every other food served that it, every other food uh, that man has ever eaten has found its genesis uh, in the sixth D creation, a part of the original element chart. And it comes from earth itself. Whatever you're going to eat or drink, you don't, you've never eaten anything as long as you've been eating things that did not have its origination in planet earth, whether it's a cow or whether it's a corn, ear of corn. Manna does not have its origination on earth at all. Its origination is from heaven. And so it's unique in that regard. And it lasted for 40 years. Joshua writes in Joshua chapter 12, after 40 years of the children of Israel eating manna, after 40 years, here's what happened. Verse 12. Um, uh, all right, verse 12. And, and the manna ceased on the, mor on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna anymore, but did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. I read it again. And the manna ceased after 40 years, after 40 years, the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn and uh, of the land. And neither did the children of Israel um, manna anymore. Neither, neither had the children of Israel manna anymore, but they did eat of the fruit. So manna, there's no manna left on earth. You know, God gave the pear tree, God gave the apple tree, God gave the goat, the lamb, God gave the water. All that still, it's part of the element chart, still a part of, of planet earth. There is no manna left on earth. There is no manna left on earth. Now, the book of Hebrews tells us in Hebrews uh, chapter 9, verse 4, and we can also find this in, 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 in Numbers chapter 17, verse 8, and I'm not going to go there just yet. I'll just tell you about them. Make note of it. Some of y'all like to make notes. Make note of Hebrews chapter, chapter 9, verse 4, and Numbers chapter 17, verse 8, where God tells Moses to take a piece of the, an omer of the manna and put it in a jar to preserve it and put that jar in the Ark of the Covenant along with Aaron's rod that budded. And Hebrews tells us the same thing, verifies that, written by Barnabas. I believe the book of Hebrews was written by this, uh, this fellow named Barnabas from the beginning days of the church. But manna. So, so we, 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 we settle in, and biblically there's no reason to disagree with this, that manna of itself was a post-creation and a very unique uh, composition that not, did not come from planet Earth. It was food that came from heaven directly. It did not find its consistency or any of its growth patterns or its or origination from the Earth, but from heaven it's a manna. Now I'm saying the same thing about Allah. That's what God said. Allah, that's what God said. I need to tell you that I wake up every morning, I've got a purpose. I wake up every morning, 
and my purpose is Atla, the fulfillment of the prophecy given to me 30 years ago. I'm not motivated by money. You may think that I am. I'll have to tell you I do like a nice suit to put on now and then and a nice tie to go with it maybe, you know, and a decent pair of shoes and a decent automobile to drive in and a comfortable bed to sleep in. But that's the extent. I'm not looking to build a big savings account or put money in the bank and and, and, and have millions upon millions of dollars. Uh, I'm not looking for any of that kind of stuff. I'm not even interested in anything beyond just a good automobile. I'm not looking for a, a private jet or anything like that. No, uh-uh. I'm not motivated by that. I'm truly not motivated by money. I, I am not. That does not motivate me. I have one purpose on planet Earth right now. That's Atla. That's the glorification of the Lord Jesus Christ. That do it right here in Harlem a place I consider exquisite in beauty. I find Harlem exquisite in beauty. Uh, you know, you, you, you ought to, some of you may want to consider this. You know, for those people who say, well, Pastor Man, he's not for the black man, and some little old ugly, I mean, one of the ugliest person I've seen in my life. Well, I've seen a lot of ugly people. But this guy's way up there, number one, number three, number somewhere, number five, ugly, came up to me and said to me, Back at a funeral some time ago, I hear you're not for the black man. He had an attitude. Boy, was he ugly. God Almighty, that boy was ugly. He just ugly. That's all he is, ugly. But, you know, for people to think that, obviously people don't think, and that's pretty clear. But how, why would I stay in Harlem? Why would I preach about how beautiful Harlem is? How many people, let me ask you something. How many people do you know talk about how beautiful Harlem is? How many, how many people do you know say it's beautiful, it's wonderful? How many people you know say that? Does Obama say it? Hell no. Does Jesse Jackson say it? Hell no. Does Al Sharpton say it? No, Al Sharpton lives downtown on in a, a $13,000 a month apartment on 72nd Street. He doesn't believe Harlem is beautiful. I mean, come on, let's talk. Mother Juan, Mother Juan Whitaker. Esther Bennett, Esther Bennett, look at this for just a second. All these people who say I'm not for the black man and the ones that they think that is, they've never said Harlem is beautiful. Harlem is consistently the melting pot, the home of the so-called black man. And I'm the one, I'm the only one that's saying how beautiful it is. Now, maybe may somebody else that may, you know, Maya Angelou may have said something, but I don't know. But you get the idea. So look how confused and ignorant and accusatory and backwards and satanic anybody who says I'm not for the black man. Well, for the last 30 years, I've been preaching about the beauty of Harlem. Now, I, I'm referencing Hamite when I say black man because I don't think black is beautiful. I don't think it is. Malcolm X didn't think it was either beautiful either. Down that prison, everything he saw about black, black male, black Friday, black Sunday, black this, everything that was black was ugly. He was right. So that's why I call him Hamite. But on the other hand, if people would just think, what the hell? That people would just think for just a second, that's the Bennett. Here I am dedicated my life to Harlem. Why would I dedicate my life to something I'm not for? It's Harlem is the home of the black man, if you will. The Hamite. I mean, let's think about it. Think of the gross ignorance of people. Sometimes it makes you just want to throw up. Anyway, I want, want to be able to say that Atla is hidden manna. A word never, and 40 years from now, Elder Joseph Smith, Elder Smith, 40 years, another 30, 10 years from now, it may evaporate. It may cease to be. I'd rather think that the Lord Jesus Christ doesn't come back in these 40 years, that it will surely be Atla. In 10 years, we can work on it. And I'm going to give you the recipe of how we're going to change Harlem to Atla. Pastor Man ain't for the black man. Imagine if Obama had stood up and said, Let's revitalize Harlem. Let's, 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 re, let's, let's bring power to the black man in Harlem. Suppose he had said that. <laughs> anyway. So here, Atla is hidden manna. 
Atla is hidden. Remember I said a few minutes ago, uh, so Mr. Engineer, put that up on the screen, Revelation chapter 2, verse 17, that Atla is hidden manna, that it, uh, it's a word, it, its origination does not come from planet Earth or from the sounds of planet Earth. Its, its origination does not come from Earth or the sounds of planet Earth. Its origination is from heaven. Verse, chapter 2, verse 17, Jesus is writing, he that hath an ear, that is to say, there are people who are not going to listen to you, Pastor Manning, don't worry about them. But those that do listen, let them hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. And to him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the hidden manna. And I will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. So that's, that, that is perhaps the most unique verse of the entire Bible, if you ask me. I mean, it just, you know, in terms of prophecy and revelation, especially if you understand Atla, because I said long before that verse became re re relevatory clear to me, relevatory clear to me, I said, I'm the only one that ever heard that name, Atla. I said that 30 years ago. And I said it's a sound that, never been, that nobody else heard it, and it comes directly from heaven, just like manna. So Atla is hidden manna. It, it, is, it is hidden manna. And I wake up every day. Again, I'm not motivated by money. I'm not motivated by race. You know, I'm not voted by, voted, motivated by fame and acclaim. I, I, you may think that that's some of the things I say. Uh, but truly, my heart, my heart is to serve Jesus. That's what, that's what at my heart, and, and to serve his, uh, the under, underserved people uh, of the Hamite community, but to serve humanity in general. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a break right here. But I, 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 I'm led after praying this morning that I just need to spend more time uh, explaining manna, the element chart. And explaining that uh, it is equivalent, that Atla is equivalent to manna. And the very beauty of all of that, you know, that when you say manna, you are saying something that God gave. No, he didn't give it to Moses, didn't give it to Amos, he didn't give it to Aaron or Abraham or Sarah or Deborah. Didn't give it to Ruth, didn't give it to Boaz or Solomon. But he gave it to me. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? You know, he gave it to me. And um, he, he must have known I'd be faithful as a servant to glorify it. He gave it. He gave it to me. And he gave manna to the children of Israel. Nobody else has had in it. And Joshua says, in Joshua chapter, what was it, uh, six, verse, 5, verse 12, Joshua said that once they left the wilderness, the manna ceased. And there's never been any more manna on planet Earth. That goes back six, 7,000 years ago. But Jesus says to John the Revelator some um, 90 years after his birth and 60 years after his ascension, Jesus said to the man that overcometh the world, I will give to him to eat of the hidden manna. So there's some manna hidden somewhere. What is that? Atla, that's what God said. Atla, that's what God, hidden manna. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you so very much. And we magnify your name for you're worthy to be praised. And um, we, 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 we thank you for this teaching. And um, we thank you for this truth about Atla and about manna. And that you've given to us. It is, it is our bread. That's what I live by. I live by the word of God that came directly from heaven to me. 
Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. And Lord, let me continue to preach this until it becomes absolutely clear. And we get converts who are willing to give their souls to manna righteousness, to atla, give everything that they have to the service of the Lord Jesus Christ in his latter-day prophecy of Atla here in Harlem, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful land, a beautiful land. I want to say right now, Jesus, I'm going to ask you, if you will, if you will give uh, seven people, no, let me say it this way, Jesus, if you will give 217 people right now, the eyes to see the beauty of Harlem, the beauty of the Hamite, and the prophecy of Atla as hidden manna. 217 people this moment, if you would give that many people, 217 people, the eyes to see and the desire to taste and to eat of the hidden manna. I'm requesting 217 people who will see and will hear and will taste and know that the Lord is good and so is manna and so is hidden manna in Atma. And in your name, Jesus, we pray and give thanks. Amen. And amen. This is symbolic. It's where Jesus was baptized. It's where John baptized. And so this is not a rebaptism. It's just a symbolic, if you will, act of what we're going to do, being in the water at, at the place where Jesus was baptized. And what I'd like to do is to baptize today that we would come to terms with the understanding of what God is calling for in righteousness. The, uh, he's not calling for prosperity. He, he isn't calling for culturalism. God is calling for righteousness. If we would commit ourselves to fulfill all righteousness, and God has calls us to be persecuted for righteousness sake, as John was persecuted for righteousness, and so Jesus. I got to tell you that I'll never forget this experience of actually um, stepping in the water where Jesus and were baptized, and where John has baptized so many people. This is such a historic and a powerful, powerful sight. Just to touch the water uh, was so critical. And I'm glad that people got baptized to have that experience. Uh, it was a safe experience and a great experience. Uh, I'm not even gonna change my clothes. I wanna just stay in baptism mode until I get back to the hotel. So that's what I wanna say. All right. This has been live from the Jordan River. <laughs> God bless you all. Peace. <laughs> Righteousness. Boom, chuckalaka goes right there. Over the years, we have served more than one million meals to hungry bellies and hungry people here in the Harlem community. And I wanted you to be able to see that. I want you to see our involvement with youth, our summer youth programs, the, uh, our courtyard being used as a, um, a place where children can be safe, guarded, and protected as they have their miniature swimming pools, um, and a safe place for children to eat that is guarded, that is protecting, protected by our own sense of security, and the wholesome and fresh meals that... Um, that we serve. We, we wanted you to be able to see the mission of this church. And we've been doing this for years. Just recently, one of our members, more than a 30 year member of this church, but it hasn't, not one that, you know, that you would probably find as members of some other churches with their nose stuck up in the air. But her father is now close to death or very sick in the state of South Carolina. And uh, well, I said to her, well, I said, well, because she doesn't have money, I said, we will buy you a bus ticket, a round trip bus or train ticket 
you to travel to South Carolina to, to be with your father in this time of pandemic. There's very little funding around. There's, there's sickness everywhere. And and she the thing that just blew me away was she said as she was talking to Elizabeth, she said, but how are you going to do that, to, to pay for me a round-trip ticket to, to travel and give me expense money? And because you got to, Pastor Manning has to feed the children. He has to take, he has to educate the children. He has to buy school supplies for them. He has to pick them up in the mornings and take them back. And then he's got the ministry he has to take care of, all the bills of running the church, of keeping a major house like our house operational, keep the lights on, keep the, how are you going to be able to do that? And she was almost reluctant to take the money because she felt that it would be better served by feeding the children. We gave it to her anyway. But we want you to know that we do a work in this community. There have been a lot of lies told on us. And it's almost unimaginable why some of the people that have lied on us. But I can tell you behind all of it is the LGBTQ community. They don't want us to be successful, but we are, and we're going to continue to be successful in serving the meals that we're serving and serving the people that we are. And the LGBTQ community will not take us down. They are not going to take our church, yet they have defamed us. They've written ugly newspaper articles about us. They've marched against us. They've done a whole lot of ugly things. But you see what we have done And that's not even the half of our service to children and to the needy in terms of our homeless shelters and the things that we've done over the years. And we will continue. And probably the lies and the smears and the ugly newspaper articles and the wicked spirits and the so-called I ain't for the black man, that is not going to go away. I don't expect it to go away. I don't. But I do tell you this, that we will succeed against all of that, for God is with us, and I am his servant.